My name is Fatima Isa from Conquasia Reporters TV. Welcome to new edition of the program Political Class. In this program, we will be discussing with one of the famous, dedicated, and diligent political leader in Nigeria, in the person of Engineer Buba Galadima. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Before I proceed, I would like you to please introduce yourself in brief. More than what I did? Sure. <laughs> well, my name's uh, uh, Buba Galadima. I'm a farmer, uh, engineer by training, but uh, currently a political commentator uh, and analyst uh, in Nigeria. I think you, you have a lot to say about yourself from uh, the name we, we're supposed to know. Well, uh, I, I had been in politics for a very, very long time since my school days from primary to the university uh, and also from 1978 to date. Uh, I had been variously, uh, I held various political offices, party political offices. I was the <coughs> national youth leader of the MPN. I was also the national financial secretary of the National Republican Convention. NRC. I was uh, board of trustees and uh, member and uh, national caucus member of all Nigerian People's uh, Party. I had been the national secretary of the Congress for Progressive Change and na <coughs> BOT member and uh, national caucus member of the all Progressives Congress, APC, <coughs> and uh, of the uh, reformed uh, APC, which went into alliance in, during the 2019 elections uh, with the PDP. And uh, I was also uh, one of the spokesmen of the People's, pa pre pre pa People's Democratic Party uh, Presidential Council, and uh, as for public service, I held uh, many positions in life, including the Director General of the National Maritime Authority. Of course, I had been chairman and uh, board member of various uh, agencies of government. I was an ED of Ajakuta Steel Company. I was uh, chairman of Nigerian Ranches. Uh, I was, of course, my degree town engineer, my degree area engineer, and I was also na uh, secretary and uh, uh, project engineer of the River State Schools Building Committee, among others. Wow. As you can see, we can, we can even spend the whole day here for, for him telling us, uh, in just introducing himself. Okay, sir. Uh, what do you think are the causative agents of uh, the out? going protests in Nigeria? Well, let me first say that uh, I was also a member of Constituent Assembly 1987, a member of the National uh, Conference, National Constitutional Conference in 1994, and also a member of uh, Jonathan's uh, National Conference of 2014. And uh, as for the question you have just asked, that is protests going on across our country. I want to state unequivocally that every citizen of this country has got the inalienable right to protest actions of government, to demonstrate against the actions of government provided he should be guided by other people's rights and he should be guided by non-violent posture. Once you can observe those, you are free to do that. And uh, so far, 
these young men and women, our children and grandchildren, have attempted to do what we, the elders, have failed to do. They have raised their voice against mismanagement of our country, against insecurity, against excesses of uh, uh, security agencies within our polity. This is democracy. Everybody has got a voice. Everybody is free to voice out and vent out his anger, provided it is done peacefully. And uh, so far, I personally was a witness to most of the uh, protests that took place in Abuja. I saw these young men and women uh, going about in the streets, not even blocking streets, not even chanting war songs, not carrying even a barrel, let alone a stick, to protest the excesses of what they called SAS. Therefore, I thought it is their legitimate right to do that within the confines of law. Okay, sir, if, 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 if I'll get you in what you're saying, Isa, um, you're in support of this protest. But uh, I want you to uh, give us, I want you to shed more light. What are your views towards the ongoing protests? Are you in support or against? And why? It is, no, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is not whether I support or I don't support that is important. What is most important is that are they under the law free to do what they are doing? My answer is yes. And this is my own interpretation because I have told you that I was a member of the Constituent Assembly in 1987, Constitutional Conference in 1994, and National Conference 2014. So I can say that we drafted the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that is in use now. And uh, there is no place, no section, and no law in Nigeria that prohibits citizens from expressing their views, from, exp from protest, and from demonstration. So it doesn't matter. I don't really matter whether I like it or not. It is their inalienable right, as I had said, to do so. And they had so far peacefully until some thugs were imported from, play, from certain states. I don't know maybe if Kano is one of them. And from other states where these young men and women were provoked, attacked, maimed, uh, dehumanized, and some even reported in the newspapers that some of them were even killed for having a solemn, non-violent protest. I don't know how some people feel that you can order for the maiming and killing of a fellow human being, spill his blood for unjust cause. Do we actually belong to any religion, either Islam or Christianity? Does the religions allow a human being to take the life of another person? I don't think I can afford to spill even an ant's life rather than kill a human being. What do you think will be the solution of this problem? Well, the children have met their demands. The government no, no, uh, had, uh, had their demands. It is now left for the government to take whatever proactive steps they will do to ameliorate the situation. And I want to advise government that they should not listen to psychophants who tell them that everything is going on fine. No, things are not good. People are complaining, whether they say it publicly or not. And even those that come out publicly to support them in private, they say many unprintable things about the way and manner government handles the affairs of our country. We should listen to these young men. We should listen to these young men and women. 
that, look, the greatest disservice we could do to ourselves was not to provide a future for our children and our grand, great grandchildren. You finish school, you cannot be employed. Sometimes even positions, recruitments are being sold as if you buy groundnut in the market. So it doesn't matter. The son of Mr. Nobody, including myself, can never get an employment from government for the simple reason that we don't, ha we don't have money to pay for those slots. And it is, not, it is not hidden. People are touting papers all over to sell positions that were allocated to certain individuals and somebody who has hardly passed, passed a degree exam could get employed while somebody with first class cannot get because his parents are not in a position to buy slots for him. I think there is need for this government to really look into these problems because Nigeria cannot go on like that. And as Sheikh Usmanu Damfodio said, when a government or a ruler closes his eyes and closes his ear to the feelings of the ordinary people, that is the greatest height of injustice that could be meted to subjects. Okay, sir, another question here is uh, most people, if not all, knew that uh, you were with the ruling party, that is uh, the APC, and uh, all of a sudden you have parted ways with them. What are the reasons behind that? Could there be any better reason more than we promised you people heaven and earth and we failed in fulfilling our promises? You don't know that we told you we will bring the cost of a liter of petrol in our, in, in our manifesto from 87 Naira when it was, so, it was sold to 40, four, 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 40 Naira. Didn't you know that we promised to provide infrastructure, Kano Abuja Road, to be constructed. Now six years, nothing is on the ground. You don't know that we promised to dredge River Niger from, from, from the, the uh, River Nome to uh, Onisha to Lokoja to Baro. Nothing is there. Do you know that we promised to, 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 to construct uh, 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 Mambila, Mambila hydroelectric power station when even no even minister or, or a senior officer of this government has ever visited uh, this site you forgot all this we, for, we, we said we will restructure the country it is there written in, in black and white in our manifesto have we attempted to do that we will make dollar equivalent to an IRA how much is it selling? 500 do naira per dollar. Promise made, promise dashed. Is there worse frustration on citizens more than their leader to tell them he's going to do this and fail to do it? We promised to bring insecurity to its knees. Then there was only Boko Haram in a corner of the country, namely Yobe, Borno, Adamawa, sometimes Gombe. Now, Boko Haram is not only all over, but it is there for everybody to see in some parts of the country. We have a new, in, 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 we introduced a new insecurity, banditare. Do you know how many people were killed in Kasina, Zampara, Sokoto, Kebi, Kaduna, parts of, uh, I mean, Kasina, and um, parts of Kano? Do you know that kidnappers cannot allow you walk from uh, go from Abuja to 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 Kaduna when they have surplus policemen, surplus policemen to deploy for an election. That they could they could line up from 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 Abuja to to Kaduna, everybody holding each other's hands. So everything that you see is happening 
is a is a is a real is a real bottled up anger that people were releasing were venting out. Uh, that is enough reason for somebody who has fought for justice, social justice all his life to bolt out of the party. I'm not looking for any elective office. I have never, never in my life, and if there is anybody that I have ever asked him that I needed an appointment, let that person come out and say, I am only looking for good governance, infrastructural development, and, and, and government guiding the people so that my children and grandchildren will not rely on anybody. They could also create wealth for themselves and others. It's not there. Where is the electricity that we promised to provide? Because we said that anybody that could not fix Nigeria's electricity within six months, what should happen to him? Now how many years? Six years, not six months. We've done nothing. So it's a, it's a bottled up frustration that people are venting out and the, that some of us felt that uh, it, we, it, could, it could be better. If it can be better, then we have no business in being there. Okay, engineer. And uh, as we all know, engineer Dr. Rabiu Musa Konkwaso is celebrating his uh, 64th birthday. What are the achievements can we say he has obtained within these years? Or let me say within those years. Well, uh, I want to thank God subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving Konkwaso such a long time because God said uh, either uh, Situna wa Sabauna he has already crossed the Situna going into the Sabauna. God has given him good health and God has given him the energy, the foresight, the empathy not to live for himself but to live for others. Kwankoso had done a lot that need to be uh, need to be appreciated by those whose lives he has touched in several several ways. Uh, Kwankoso is one leader in this country that has lived for our people, has lived for our country, had made tremendous contributions during the uh, when he held positions that God bestowed on his shoulders. As far as Konkoso's contributions to national development and Kano State is concerned, they are there for everybody to see. Look at the infrastructural developments he has all over uh, Kano State. Look at the institutions he established, about seven, 27 of them, institutions to empower the public. Look at how he empowered people with education, sent them to schools not only within Nigeria, but all over the world. Look at his foresight of trying to assist orphans from, from, like, from the uh, Boko Haram torn challenges in other parts of this country, specifically from Borno Yobe and uh, uh, Adamawa, when he brought them to Kano and is giving them education. Look at what uh, Kwankoswa has done by building, for example, hostels, 300 bed hostels in Maiduguri, uh, Bauchi, Sokoto, Kwara, uh, Borno, and a lot of other places, including Ogun and uh, Edo, built by Kwankoswa. So he, for me, Kwankoswa should thank God that this is a life well fulfilled. And if Nigerians are looking for a leader with foresight, with, with, with vision, they, can, they don't need to look around. Kwankoso is there for them. I am sure that given the opportunity, he would take Nigeria to higher, higher, higher levels. And uh, this is a man that extremely detrabalized. This is a man that throughout his second tenure in Kano, no single blood, no drop of blood of any human being was shed. He was there for all tribes. He was there for all residents of Kano, whether indigenous or non-indigenous, and it was his duty to protect them. 
And these are the kind of leader with a large heart that we needed. He had commissioners from other, uh, from other parts of the country in the, in, the, in the cabinet of Kano State when he held sway as the governor of Kano. And uh, of course, uh, there was a time that when you approach Kano in the night during his tenure, you would think that you are either approaching uh, Dubai, London, Los Angeles, Tokyo, or, or, or New York. Today, Kano is a carcass. So uh, I congratulate him and I urge him to live the rest of his life for not only the people of Kano, but for the people of entire Nigeria. And uh, I hope God will see his heart and help uh, Nigerians to really realize that they have an oasis in the desert in the person of engineer Dr. Senator Rabi Musa Konkoso. Thank you very much, sir. Still on uh, political classes. Sir, from uh, your conversation so far, it seems like uh, Senator Rabi Musa Konkoso is uh, going to contest for presidency in the upcoming general election 2023. Every human being is a political animal. He has not said he's going to contest. But if time opportunity him to do that as a Nigerian, he's uh, free to contest. But I would have said that if Nigerians are looking for a good person, if Nigerians are looking for a performer, if Nigerians are looking for a tribalized person who will unify the country, if Nigerians are looking for somebody which, who will take Nigeria to, a great, to greater heights, it is them that should come and knock on the doors of Konkoso and say, Konkoso must contest, Konkoso must contest, Konkoso must contest. Okay, sir. Lastly, what are your message to Nigeria and the youth at large? Well, uh, severally, I have been, for example, interviewed on what is happening in the country, the, in, the, the current protests. Uh, a lot of people drew my attention to insecurity problems. A lot of people drew my attention to infrastructural development across our country. And, of course, so many people believe that our country has never been as divided as we find ourselves today. My message is simple. Nigerians should look at every issue before them with a large heart, with a large heart, with a large heart. We must be accommodating. We must be our brother's keepers. And uh, we should look for people that will unify us irrespective of tribe, religion, or where we come from. And uh, you are your misfortune or you are against as a Nigerian should be our own, not your own alone. And uh, it is important to state that when it suits us, we, rem we, 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 we tell people of the best practices we find in Europe, in America or in the Far East. Those situations don't just come from the blues. The nationals of those countries sat down, took a decision to make the place better, to make the place peaceful, to make the place prosperous, to give the citizens hope, to give citizens of those countries uh, development. Take, for example, Malaysia. When Mahathir Mohamed became the Prime Minister of Malaysia, he called all Ma Malaysians, namely the, the native Malay, the Chinese, and the Indians, the three big ex eth ethnic groups, and sat them down. Look, he said, there is no need for acrimony. There is no need to fight ourselves because the ethnic Malays who are majority are only 53 percent. The Chinese about 20 something percent, while the Indians 
were about 17, 18 percent of the country. Where do we want to see our country in the next 20 years? And they sat down to really project Malaysia, how they wanted, they would want to see it become in 20 years' time. They made, they made a rolling development plan. That is why in Malaysia, no politician will come and campaign on the basis of that I will provide electricity, I will provide road, I will provide uh, education, I will provide health services. No. All they need is in their development plan and they know that by so-so time, by next five years, we would need so many secondary schools, I mean so many primary schools, so many secondary schools, so many universities, and even the location of those places. And they do a graph of how to assess. By so, so, so time, we must produce these megawatts of electricity. And they work towards that. Therefore, the Malaysians will only elect you to go and represent them because they know what is in there, in the, in the budget, in the development plan for them, for you to be a superintendent, for you to make sure that what is meant for them they get and what is meant for the other person he gets by this we can never develop we can never be united we can never be one country so my advice is that we should we should look we should be patriotic as nigerians rather than i come from kano i come from yobe i come from enugu that is not the issue wherever you are resident that is your that's your, that's your town. That's where you come from. Because you drink the water that is provided in that state. You, you enjoy the electricity that uh, is run in that state. You enjoy educational facilities. You enjoy health services. If you are sick, you may not be taken to your village. If there is a breakdown of any, 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 any disease, your first to call is the primary health center in that location. So, uh, Nigerians must unite. We be our own brothers keepers, and we make sure that the 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 the, the misfortune of any one of us is the misfortune for all of us. This is how people across the world build the countries, not in our own case. That this is my religion. That is my brother. That is my tribe. We can never be one. And we can never move forward at all with this kind of attitude. That is why people like us want to be watchdogs trying, as a conscience of the nation. Try to bring them in tune with the real, modern realities in the world rather than primordial sentiments of religion, tribe, sectional, or whatever. It can never take us anywhere. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, Konkosia Reporters TV wish to see you again if the need arises. Thank you very much. But uh, you didn't allow me to wish you well. <laughs> okay. Yes. I, I was thinking it's, it's all joined no, in no, the no, goodwill no, no, messages. No, 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 no. Okay. You are a new television station. Sure. I want you to understand that there is going to be a lot of challenges. The challenges are one that those in authority or regulatory agencies will look at you as an opposition news outfit. Therefore, they will try to fight you. They will try to, to cripple you. They will try to, in fact, even ban you. So you have to be careful. Two, that you are not going to be only the mouthpiece of Concosia. You should, be, you should run your TV station on objectivity. And as if you want to progress and become the Al Jazeera or the CNN of this world, you have to open your doors to everybody, including the enemies of Concosia. Let them come and air their views. You must be open. Three, you will soon run 
into problems of resources because they are very difficult to come. Therefore, you must be resilient, you must be perseverant, you must, you must, you must be dogged in insisting that you must succeed, irrespective of what challenges you find before you. So this is a Kwankwasia TV outfit for all Nigerians. And I call on all Nigerians to come and make an objective analysis, criticisms, and, 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 uh, and, uh, and uh, air their views in a manner that it will not infringe or libel any person. You have to avoid that for you to succeed. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be your guest. And I hope to be around whenever I am asked to come.